Well, hello, how's everybody doing? Are you good? Yeah, okay, a few of you, all right. Hopefully more of you are good at the end of this experience. Say thank you for joining us online. And today, we're tackling the question, um, do you feel like you have the tools to have a truly loving relationship? And so today, we thought we'd just change it up a little bit. If you missed last week, uh, we talked really kind of philosophically and theologically about relationships and how they should work according to the Bible. But today, I thought I would bring my beautiful wife uh, to interact with us in a, in a conversation around some tools, really practically, on how you can have a relationship, whether you're here and you're married or thinking about getting married or you're not married and not thinking about getting married ever, uh, whatever that is, uh, we just want you to know that there are tools that could be applied to every relationship. And so thanks for being here, Car. Thanks for having me. You know, and I, and I thought it'd be kind of fun um, just to kind of show how our life started together officially, um, our wedding picture. Yes. Oh, you, have, you have such great hair in this picture. I just, I, I actually had hair in that picture. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you remember that day? I remember. Yeah, I we remember. had no idea what we were doing. Anyway, yeah. it was, it, it's been awesome. It was great. But and the important thing is you think you know what you're doing. That's, that that's the important thing. And, and, and love is decision, right? That's right, yeah. And so, uh, so we thought we would just share some of our uh, stories, things that we've learned. Both of us uh, did some training officially in this area. Um, in our Bible college training, but also uh, just through life. Mm -hmm. And so we've had an amazing wife, um, three amazing kids, mm -hmm. um, just experiencing that together. So um, why don't we just kind of jump in? And today it is going to be conversational. And so we're going we're gonna to fire through a lot of things. So you may want to take notes. Um, if you do, you can do that. But also if, if you feel like, man, I'd, I'd like to follow along, you can actually type the word notes to 905-937-5610, and you'll get a PDF mm -hmm. of everything that we have right in front of us. And so uh, you can just follow along with us, and it may spark a question. Um, and so uh, you could fire those, and we'll try our best to answer those at the end of our experience today. All right. So uh, let's just start uh, first about, about the whole purpose of relationship, because this series is entitled Fake News. And really, the idea is that there's a lot of ideas out there that hurt us. They sound good. We maybe believe them as a culture, but they aren't good. And they actually hurt us. And so, and so the first one when it comes to relationships is I think many people in our culture think that um, it's to feel good. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's feel yeah. good physically, whether it's to yeah. feel good about myself, that I, my identity, my value comes from my relationship with you, and you're there to validate me. Mm -hmm. and, and this is really a dangerous uh, uh, myth. Absolutely. Right. Like, what, what do you do then in that case when your feelings change? Right. What happens then? Does that mean your whole relationship was a lie? Does that mean you're just having a bad day? Or what is your, what is your compass that brings you back to that beginning of why you started that relationship? Well, yeah, because if your whole relationship is based on feelings, mm -hmm. you're in trouble. It's true. <laughs> I, I think you actually talked about that a little while ago in one of your messages about how they, feelings are terrible taskmasters. They are. They're that, good indicators on that dashboard. Correct. They alert but, you to something yeah. needs to be paid attention to. And, and, yeah. I think, and I think for this, true love is actually why we follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so we follow Jesus not because we follow a religion or because we, we need structure necessarily in our life, although we do. We follow Jesus simply because we believe he's the perfect example mm -hmm. of what love truly looks like. Mm -hmm. That even when, when people turn against you, um, even when they don't like you, you love anyway. Mm -hmm. Like true love is actually a choice you get to make every day. Mm -hmm. And that's the best yeah. part about it. You're not a victim in this area of love. I think our mm -hmm. culture treats everybody like victims. Um, and, and you're <laughs> not. You actually get the choice. You get to choose to love or not mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then another lie is, uh, you know, from, from the famous movie line, you complete me. Yes. Um, <laughs> this idea, I think we get it for Greek mm -hmm. mythology where uh, the gods created humans with four arms and four legs and then split us in half. And mm -hmm. so we're, we're sp spend our whole life looking for the other half. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, I mean, I, what do you think about that? Like, do you think that someone else can actually complete you? Is that the point of a relationship? I don't think that is the point. Okay. I think the point of being in relationship with other people is that they help they help add to your life. They help, they help you walk further on your journey with you. But I think one of the parts of that myth, to debunk that in my mind, is, is that um, oftentimes we're very self-focused in relationships. Right. And if you're truly wanting to be in relationship with somebody, it's not all about what you can get from somebody. It's about how you can give to mm. them. And if you're just in a relationship for what you can get, um, even God's word kind of warns us that that's a pretty shaky foundation. Yeah. So 
what, what can you get? Yes, you should be able to have certain things that, you know, complement you, especially personality-wise. You want to make sure, like, you're compatible and all that kind of stuff, uh, especially if it's marriage relationship, but even friendship. You want friendships that help build each other up. It's right. not just one way. And it's, it right? is by, so, it's a byproduct, not, right. the, not the target. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think you're amazing at this, by the way. Mm. You really are. Um, Thank you. You, like no, no, I mean this. Like you're not going to meet a more giving person in my estimation in the whole planet. And it's it's why our family works really well because you've modeled this to to me and, and to our children. And, and I think it's actually the, the other problem with it is that you put expectations on other people. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like the reason why I I do not like chick flicks. You do. Mm -hmm. um, and so for Valentine's <laughs> Day, I'll endure it. Um, and why you know I lo and guys like action films. Mm -hmm. and, and if you look at that, it's kind of funny the way women are portrayed in both those and men are portrayed. Mm -hmm. Like in chick flicks, men are in touch with their emotions. I don't know where these men are, but they're, uh, you know, it's like I, I watch it, I'm just so frustrated because I'm like, no, it doesn't work like this. Like in a chick flick, everything is always perfect and he's always sensitive. And but he doesn't always start out that way. Oftentimes the guys uh, start out and they need help to be able to see what their see, emotions I should be like. I think you guys actually believe that's how it works. Your job is to change us. And then, but then you look at action flicks, right? And, and like, and again, women don't like it because women often in those are portrayed as kind of objects mm -hmm. and right mm -hmm. sidekicks and yeah. accessories to the yeah. guy. And that's not fair either. No, they and just want to be equal partners. Yes, that's they it. do. <laughs> just slightly more equal in some situations. Um, and, uh, and so I think that's part of the challenge in relationships. We put our expectations mm -hmm. on another person and they mm -hmm. can never live up to those. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that was one of the hardest things for us when we first got married was mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you let go of some of those expectations? Mm -hmm. And actually, I think that's something that I constantly still battle with in all my relationships because I have a certain level of expectation that I expect <laughs> of myself. Yes. And so I, you know, have this, I'm getting better at it, but I have this idea that that's just normal. That's just what everybody would do, right? In a given situation, and like, you would treat somebody this way, wouldn't you? And then if I don't see that happening around me in a relationship, I, I get very disappointed, and I think, ah. Oh. I'm so sorry. You know, I'm just <laughs> I am trying. Oh, I'm not talking just oh, about this just relationship. To, oh, not just about yeah, me? Yeah. Okay. It's okay. This You're isn't marriage counseling? You're off okay. the hook. Um, yeah, but, but I think that's just something that we need to, like, remember, and just like, yeah, we can't, we can't hold everybody to our expectations and, and uh, expect that they're going to, you know, be us because that's why we are uniquely who we are. You know, yeah. we have our own set. And we need to be able to help ourselves, like, remind ourselves to kind of be stable in that expectation as well. Yeah, so I just articulated three things that I think are the foundation, and then we'll get into some of the tools. Um, I think you, you need to learn to be loving, and mm -hmm. loving is not what I necessarily get. Mm -hmm. it's, what, it's what I can give, and mm -hmm. it's a choice. I think mm -hmm. you need to be realistic I think that uh, a lot of people are unrealistic. Mm -hmm. And then I think you need to be united in purpose. Mm -hmm. There's a, in a passage in the Bible mm -hmm. that says, do not be unyoked with unbelievers. And I, when I was growing up, I thought that meant, you know, whether you had the tag Christian or non-Christian mm -hmm. and, you know, you separated that way. But actually in the original language in the Greek, it means anyone who doesn't share your convictions. Mm -hmm. And that can be wide ranging. Mm -hmm. it, it, the idea is that just make sure that when, when you want to be in a meaningful, long-lasting relationship, that you share the same convictions. Mm -hmm. You're moving in the same direction. You're united in purpose. Yeah. And so I just articulated this way. Um, if you really want great relationships, and, and you may not, um, you're entitled to that choice. But if you really want mm -hmm. great relationships, you, you have to learn first to be loving. I had to learn mm -hmm. that because that, that does not come naturally at all. You have to be realistic that this mm -hmm. is a process, a journey, that um, it's, you're not going to get it all figured out in the first 5, 10, 20, 30 years. Um, you know, and, and, and then you have to be united in purpose. You have, to, you have to go, okay, this is what we are going to be about. Not what I'm about, what you're about, but what we are about. And so I want to just talk practically uh, uh, for really quickly. Um, there's a, a, a survey tool that we use here at the church called Prepare and Enrich. <laughs> And before you get married in our context, we encourage you, uh, we actually mandatory, make it mandatory, mm -hmm. that you take this survey, and it's not a test, it's mm -hmm. just to draw out some things to pay attention. And so they, they actually surveyed 20,000 couples. And these are the top five tools. So I don't, I don't know if you ever try to do a job with tools that are not sharp, mm -hmm. um, or I guess I, whatever analogy you want to use mm -hmm. there, but it's so frustrating. Or if you've gone to a job and you don't have the right tool, Right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't work either. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the same in relationship. Yeah. I think some of us are missing certain tools in our tool belt. Mm -hmm. Or the tools that we do have are dull because mm -hmm. we aren't using them properly. Mm -hmm. And it's just frustrating. 
and nothing gets accomplished. And so we want to just take a few minutes to talk about five tools really quickly that really will help you if you understand them. And, and so the first one, and I think this is the top one, actually, it's, it's communication. Um, I think the, the tag I came up with that is I want to be understood and valued. Communication isn't talking. Um, I can talk. Um, communication is listening to, to understand, right? That's right. And I had to work yeah. on that a lot. Am I getting better? You're getting much better. Thank yes. you. Am, yeah. I, am I being heard and understood? You are being, I think you're being heard. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I, you're, you're being heard. I want to yeah. be understood, yeah. though, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so here's the way the Bible said, um, in Ephesians 4.29, it said, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up. Okay, just okay, okay, just a test here, okay? Mm -hmm. Think about the conversations you had with someone you're in key relationship with this week. Think about the words that came out of your mouth, right? Were they all to build up <laughs> or were they to kind of get back, tear down, express frustration? That's a big one. And so only what is good for building up according to their needs, mm -hmm. not my needs. Mm -hmm. Like I think sometimes I want you to understand it so you'll change for me. Instead of, no, I, I need to listen so I know what your needs are so I can serve those, that it may benefit those who listen. And I think when you're talking about this whole listening and, and responding, like a lot of times you're right, people in relationships will listen just so that they can jump in and say what they're thinking about. It's like they're just waiting for a little break in the conversation so that they can jump in and start talking about what they had. They had no intention of hearing anything you said, right? And so if you actually listen to just jump in rather than listening to really listen to what that person's talking about and then respond in a way that's actually going to build them up, that will actually help to, re to strengthen any relationship. Yeah, and, and, I, uh, and I like yeah. this quote um, uh, by Mignon. It said, we hear only half of what is said to us, understand only half of that, believe only half of that, and remember only half of that. Mm -hmm. the, the reality is that we all have these filters. So mm -hmm. by the time... I have translated what you're saying. It may be completely different than your intent. Mm -hmm. And so I think for us in our relationship, we've spent a lot of time uh, trying to understand each other. Like mm -hmm. when you say this, this is what you mean. Like mm -hmm. we have a joke in our family. Uh, Carlene's maiden name is Forsberg. Um, and so we call it Forsbergian. I, and do, I don't. Yeah, she, she doesn't. Does, yeah. she, doesn't <laughs> she doesn't think this is funny, but hopefully you do. And I'm still happily married after this. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> But, but Forsbergian in her, her family, you, you didn't deal with, with conflict. You not did, head on, not you, head on. Not head on. You, you kind of beat around the bush. Yeah. You, you would, if you wanted something, you'd ask it in the frame of a question like, mm -hmm. hey, would you like a cookie? Which really in Forsbergian means, I would like one, would you mind getting me one? Which is good. But in my family, it was just like, you, you just said exactly what you thought. And that can be a little bit devastating if you're not used to that. Because it can be pretty blunt and aggressive. But then, but then if you think about it, most people would understand this if you, if you said, oh, so I noticed it's garbage day tomorrow. I go, right? yeah. I, no, right? I would hear. And you know what that is? I, I, no, I would hear, <laughs> yes, it is. That's a very good point. Why are we talking about it? I would make that leap. But, you know? but, what, you, but what you mean is take the garbage out. Exactly. You lazy buffoon. <laughs> right? Um, that's a, yeah, see, so we had to learn that. I'm trying to give people the opportunity to do it, you know? <laughs> You're so kind. You're just so giving. I tried. <laughs> I mean, you're just helping build me up. And so, no, I, I think that's really important, though, because a lot mm. of people don't understand this. Mm -hmm. And here's the interesting thing. You're actually attracted to people who are, are actually different than you. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. But so, so they're going to use language that you, you need to filter and understand. So now mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you ask me a question, I have to interpret that. It's not a question. It's a statement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, I have to, and I have to really work hard to understand exactly what that statement is. And mm -hmm. I'm getting there. You're getting much better. Do you have yes. any, anything you'd like to, any questions? <laughs> um, I think you also have to be aware of, of, of triggers and absolute mm -hmm. statements. Mm -hmm. Like, I think sometimes in an argument you'll say, you know, you always do this. Mm -hmm. And that's just not true. Mm -hmm. You know, That's never true. No. Oh. <laughs> that was also Forsbergian. Yeah. That was correction in a loving way. I'm in front of all my friends. Um, so. But the thing is, the longer that you have relationship with somebody, whether it's a friend, whether you're a parent, whether you're a brother, a sister, um, a son, daughter, whatever you are, every one of us sitting here is in relationship with somebody meaningful. And the goal in life isn't just to get through life and you know hit some kind of 
target and, and be done. The goal is to be able to go through and learn as much as you can, be the best that you are created to be because God's made you with your unique talents and abilities very, very specific so that you can use them to be able to make an impact in this world. And, and if you kind of miss that and you kind of skip over that and skip to the end, you miss the whole joy of the journey. And a huge part of that journey is those meaningful relationships. And you can make an incredible impact in somebody's life just by being willing to take the time to listen to them and to serve them and ask, what can I do? What, what did or, I feel they need today for them? Or another really good is just help me understand. Yeah. Like you said this, yeah. it hurt my feelings, or I don't, I obviously I'm frustrating you. Like mm -hmm. when we were first married, it took me about a year to realize that every Saturday night we were frustrated with each other and, and we couldn't figure out why until we, I, we actually unpacked it and it was because there were certain things that you wanted to do on a Saturday and there were certain, certain things I wanted to do and they were different. Mm -hmm. And we never talked about it, so we just got mad at each other. Now, Carlene's being mad is like, I mean, it's like the nicest mad you've ever been, but she just, she just smiles at you and doesn't say anything. But, but um, <laughs> now I know I'm really in trouble then, but it's, but, but I, think, I think we needed to learn to talk to each other. We did, And that's yeah. by being present. Yeah. Okay, I'm a, okay, too transparent. <laughs> and at the end, no, at the end of the day, I think what's really important then with relationships, whatever the relationship is, how you make that person feel is a big marker of what, what part you're playing in that relationship. And that's true communication. That's right. That's right. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's the first tool. Mm -hmm. Learn to talk to each other. And mm -hmm. if you don't know how to do that, um, get help, seriously, mm -hmm. to figure that out because that, that is a make or breaker. Mm -hmm. um, second is shared experiences. Uh, the truth is the reason you want to be in relationship is because you want to have someone who you can laugh with and cry with, that mm -hmm. you're going to have enough of shared experiences. And this takes a long time. Mm -hmm. um, that you can know each other, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a verse in Deuteronomy. I'm going to read that here. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. So, so basically, think about that all the time. Yeah, well, I think <laughs> for people, uh, the, for a lot of the Jewish nation, they read this literally. Yeah. And so they, they actually, they call phylacteries, they, they tie them on their hands and mm -hmm. forehead. But mm -hmm. what it means is just always be present, always be under, aware that God mm -hmm. is with you mm -hmm. and share these experiences in mm -hmm. every moment, every such, take mm -hmm. every opportunity yeah. to share an experience. It's, yeah. it's what Henry Ford said, I like this. He said, coming together is easy, keeping together is progress, working together is success. Mm -hmm. And so I think you need to find common ground. And mm -hmm. how, I mean, how we've, how we've kind of figured that out. Oh, yeah. I mean, because you are so interested in like sports, that's like your big thing. You guys haven't figured that out yet, right? But yeah. volleyball, especially. <laughs> and uh, and so for me, I've just you know I've I've embraced that part of it, knowing how important it is. Not because the love of the game, because I've just you know if unless my kids are don't. watching, unless my kids are playing, I mean. <laughs> I'm not that interested for some reason. I don't know, you know? So, so I'm just, I just have to realize I can respect you even if it's not my primary interest, right? Mm -hmm. Not your primary, but it's a big interest. Yeah. So, and that's okay. And I don't have to feel like, oh, no, we have nothing in common. You know, the thing is, is just to be able to celebrate those differences and go, it's okay. They're made the way they are made. That's how they're wired. And I'll do different things, you know? And then as long as, as, long as both kind of tanks are being you know, met that way. And then when you come together, you still have common interests. You do some things that, you know, you share together as well. Well, I think yeah. the myth is that you have to do everything together. Yes. And yes. that's just yeah. not true. Like, yeah. shopping is not my thing at all. No, it's not. At all. <laughs> um, so I will sometimes yeah. endure it, but it's <laughs> like, I, I get to a point, I'm like, I got to go home. I'm sorry. Like, yeah. and, and, and so you have girlfriends in your life that mm -hmm. you do things that are shared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have guy friends in my life, like I play basketball three days a week. Mm -hmm. I coach volleyball. Mm -hmm. And that's okay as long as you have things that you're doing together. So yeah. for us, the key in that has been our family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we made a commitment that um, every Saturday when the kids were growing up, we did something as a family. That was a mm -hmm. commitment. Mm -hmm. um, and even when the kids were kicking and screaming and we don't want to do this and mm -hmm. it was a bit of a pain and it would, we'd rather stay inside, we, we, we went hiking a lot. 
we would plan family. We still do family mm -hmm. vacations. That's a mm -hmm. high value yeah. for us. Yeah. It's, and, and when we talk as a family, what do we talk about? Our shared memories. Yes. Our shared experiences. And yeah. we had to work yeah. hard to make those happen. Mm -hmm. It's not yeah, sitting around. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Just, and just being lazy, mm -hmm. just going, okay, we're just going to watch another movie. Like, that's just lazy. Mm -hmm. Or everyone go to your own room and play on your own devices. That's just lazy. You, someone in the, in the relationship has to person up. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> that was so people, diplomatic. I know. I was, I, was, I was, you know, trying to communicate and, uh, in a way that I could be understood. And so, but so that, that was a really big one for us as well. Um, the, yeah. the third one is kind of related to it, and it's, it's celebrating diversity. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think not only do we want to share things, but we also mm -hmm. want to do this life together. And mm -hmm. this is where Ecclesiastes come into play. It says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. Wow, if, mm. if we could just do this for each other. Mm -hmm. We're pretty good at kicking people when they're down. We're pretty good at pointing out why they stumbled and why they fell. We're not really good at picking each other up. Mm -hmm. But pity the one who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they, they will keep warm. I like that passage. Uh, but how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. I, th I think that's pretty powerful. That's so powerful. That's so powerful. And, and then talking about that third strand and that cord being God. Um, yeah, yeah I, think, I think we all try to do relationships on our own. And... Uh, we do all we can. Yeah. But God's got to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think for us, um, this has meant that we celebrate our diversity. So you, you are really good at details. I'm really not good at details at all. Um, just ask my staff and my wife. And so I, I entrust you with the details. Um, I'm, really, I'm really good at crazy dreams, big ideas, vision. I, I just believe everything is possible. Mm -hmm. So in our, in our relationship, the way that has worked is I'll have these big crazy ideas for how we can do this or that. And then you come along and you go, yeah, okay. But have you thought about this or that? And I used to get frustrated with that. Now I love it because my big ideas are only as good as the, the ability to execute mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And so your strength in that area is really amazing. And so in our home... Carlene actually takes care of the finances because she's better at that than I. So I don't see it as failure. I just go, no, what are you great at? Yeah, help us be great at that together. And what am I good? What do I bring? And let us do that together. And so I think there's this idea of shared experience, but also mm -hmm. celebrating mm -hmm. diversity. Mm -hmm. That we're act the things that actually aggravate you about the other person are actually the thing you need. That's <laughs> the best part of this. The best part about this is the thing that actually aggravates you about the other person is the very thing you need. So cheer it. Yeah, I love it. When I'm so frustrated with you right now, but I know there's good in that. I, I think that's really, really powerful. And I think it's important, too, to know that when you were talking about different things that the other is really good at in relationship, whatever relationship we're in, is, is just, like, celebrate that. Don't think of it as dumping. Don't think of it as that, because if you have that on your brain, just like, oh, I don't want to do it, and so I'm just going to let that person do it because I just can't be bothered, well, that's not really a loving thing to do. So if you really have love as your highest value for that relationship, and then you are kind of just throwing it on another person to do because you just can't take the time, then you have to ask yourself, is that, is that a real relationship? Is that what we're really working towards? And if not, can we make it better? Can we get stronger? And, and I believe that if two people are committed to that, I believe the answer is always yes. Yeah, and I think this is where communication comes in because I used to never do, I wouldn't, sorry, that was bad English. I would never do the dishes. That's true. I, I, <laughs> I'm so frustrated right now, but I appreciate it because your strength is, my, no, um, no, it's, it's true because I, I, I just had no awareness of that. And so when, we, when you brought up now, if I see the dishes, mm -hmm. I do my best to, to clean the dishes. Mm -hmm. And we have, we have, it's funny, we have these roles that we've established. I yeah. take care of the floors in our house. Mm -hmm. um, you did a good job, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. You do, you, you'll do the laundry, but you dump it on the bed, and I fold it if, I, if I'm there. I mean, it doesn't mean we don't, do the, we don't mm -hmm. often do the other thing. It's just mm -hmm. we kind of have clearly established these are things that yeah. we... 
can and do. It's, it's all about looking around and seeing what can I do to help too, <laughs> yeah, right? That's true. So. Yeah, that's a big thing. I miss that a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, so what do you see? Oh, no, I missed something. Okay, anyway. Um, that leads us to the fourth one, conflict resolution. Mm, that's a um, good I one. mean, the truth is you're going to fight. You're going to fight. Mm -hmm. like, like, this idea that you're never going to fight, like, what planet do you live on? Like, really, you're going to fight as long as you fight for us. Did you get that? It's okay to fight as long as you're fighting for us. And don't let those tools that you've sharpened so well in your life become weapons. Ooh. Mic drop. Come on. No. <laughs> Stop. Like, really, right? We all Can have these tools. Can you see why I love this woman? <laughs> we all have these tools in our lives, though, and they are good, and God's given yeah. them to us. Not but only we do can you... use them for good or for evil. But and yeah. it's your choice as to what you do with that tool, right? And so. That was awesome. So. <laughs> I just, I had this, you know, this I'm image. Having, the, I'm just having a moment. Thing. Just yeah. talk amongst yourself. Okay. Um, so, um, it, well, and, and, and that actually reflects in Proverbs 27, mm -hmm. right, where it says that. Yes. <laughs> oh, that right there. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. In Proverbs 27, it says this, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. The one who guards a fig tree will eat its fruit, and whoever protects their master will be honored. Yeah, I think... Mm -hmm. This is where you get to protect one another through mm -hmm. conflict. Mm -hmm. um, I love this saying, happiness is not the absence of conflict. It's not. Yeah. We think peace is the absence of conflict. It's not. It's actually the ability to cope with it and actually mm -hmm. be stronger for it. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that iron sharpens iron. So if mm -hmm. you're a blacksmith and you put something on the anvil and you hammer it, that's a process. And there mm -hmm. are sparks. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of heat. But yeah. it's because there's a purpose. You're mm -hmm. becoming better. And so mm -hmm. for us, we've had to learn um, how, how to solve problems, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when to solve them, uh, yeah. how to navigate, because again, when, I, when we were first married, what, what I love about you, Car, is, man, was I a bit of a mess, um, really, when I think about it, and, and, and here's the deal, when you first get married, you're not going to have it figured out, mm. um, and if, if you only love the person for what you expect them to be perfect, you don't understand the process, and so I had anger, I had an anger issue, I really did, I've dealt with that, I'm, I'm still working on it. I occasionally still get a yellow card in volleyball, but, um, but, 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 but I used to have much a real, better though. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and so what would happen is our conflict was I would quickly escalate mm. and just explode. And it was, un, it was totally unfair to you. It was my own, as I processed with, my, with a counselor, it was my own insecurity, my own inadequacy that I was dumping onto you. And, and then, and then and you would re retreat and it, it was not good. Mm. Cause so, I'm not a fighter. No, you're not. I'm not. I, I, if, if, if I have conflict, like I grew up in a home, and this is a big part of it too. You guys, you can all take this with you when right. you think of y your history, how you grew up, how you learned to process, because that's your home is your like big petri dish for life, right? And so if you learned how to process in a confrontational way where everything just kind of went out in the open, that's much different than someone who grows up in a home where everything is just very calm and very... Okay, you talk about it, and then you might talk about it if it builds up to like a huge escalation. But even then, you'll never raise your voice at somebody. So, so if you but grow up it, in a home like that, you. there's yes. another way to do it, though. You still, yeah. you still do it. You sometimes you can be passive aggressive. Yes, it's true. Sure. So, sure. so learning those two things and learning yeah. that you're not falling apart if you have a disagreement, right? Like that for me, I think that was hard for me just to realize, like. Oh, so it's, so it's okay to have disagreements like this? Like, I, I did not know that. <laughs> and so I was just like coming from an entirely different context. We're from the same country. We're from the same, you know, like not the same province, but like, you know, Western Canada. You think like we'd all have very similar, you know, values and all grew up in Christian homes. But it's the way that we learn how to process stuff that frames how we interpret what's really happening. And so we have to be truth tellers to ourselves. We have to make sure that we're telling ourselves the truth in a moment and not feel like, you know, the whole world is crumbling under us because something bad is happening. But it's how we treat one another in that moment when something is not the way it should be. Yeah, right? and, here, and here's the so, reality. No one is naturally good at conflict resolution. No, I don't think so. No one is. So don't worry. Yeah. If, you, if you're terrible at this, it's okay. Me too. <laughs> okay? We had to learn. And, and so, he, <laughs> and, and it... You, you make a decision. Like, you read books, you go online, you go to a counselor, you do what you need to do to get this figured out. Mm -hmm. here's, here's, the, here's the challenge. Is that relationships, really good ones, they take a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And this communication and conflict resolution, in my mind, are the two biggest. Mm 
that if you can figure out how to do that really well. So right now, when we have a conflict, um, Carlene likes to process every detail. I explode and withdraw. She likes to analyze, and, and it doesn't always work. So when we were first learning this, when a conflict would arise, I would go, I would say, okay, I'm going to leave the situation for, for your sake, because I know I'm turning to the Incredible Hulk right now, um, and I'm going to go blow steam off, but you needed to know, I said, I promise that I'm going to come back when I've got myself sorted out, and we can talk about this, because that was really important for you. In the moment, I didn't want to talk about all the details, because I was just, I was not in a space. So we learned to do that. Mm -hmm. We also learned mm -hmm. to be proactive in our conflict resolution, where yeah. it's like, okay, if we can anticipate a, mm -hmm. a problem coming, we get ahead of it. And so, so that was a learned skill. And, and mm -hmm. we're running out of time. So we just, we have to jump right to the last one. There's so much we yeah, could say. Yeah, I know. It's true. I know. It's we could true. talk. We love talking. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, this is then, a good topic. And, 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 and then the last one yeah. is, is what I call a servant's heart mm -hmm. or, or true love. Mm -hmm. Like, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. he, he, here's the thing, okay? If, if your value isn't, I want you to win more mm -hmm. than me, mm -hmm. it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, for me, when I married Carlene, I married her so she could be who God made her to be. Mm. And I was just the doofus coming along to sharpen her <laughs> <laughs> through experience. So I just felt like, mm -hmm. no, I, I didn't feel like that. I felt like we could do this together, mm -hmm. but I want, I've always wanted you to win. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And you've always been so supportive that way. Well, so. I, and, and mm -hmm. I think, but you've always wanted me to win too. Mm -hmm. Like when we made mm -hmm. tough decisions, like are we going to move across the country mm -hmm. or are we going to, we did this, mm -hmm. sell everything and move to a place we don't know to pursue mm -hmm. we, a dream that we're not sure how it's going to work mm -hmm. out. Yeah, we moved to Ontario twice, so I don't know if you guys knew that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's our second. <laughs> um, yeah. We loved it so much. Yeah, um, it came back. <laughs> um, and so yeah. I think that's, and, and so I think this is mm -hmm. where, the, the, and let's just finish with this passage, and then we'll get to some questions because we've run out of time. But mm -hmm. um, in 1 Corinthians 13, 4, here's what it says. And I, I say this, we use this only at weddings. We should actually probably read this to each other mm -hmm. uh, almost every day. <laughs> but mm -hmm. love is patient. Mm -hmm. How patient are you with those that you truly love? Patient means, hey, I don't expect you to have it all figured out. I don't expect you to be perfect. I, I'm willing to work through the muck and the mud and the mess with you to get to where I believe you can be. Um, love is kind. Do you, you, are you kind? Um, it does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It's not easily angered. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Um, that's, that's a hard one. Because we like to rem mm -hmm. remind people of all their past failures. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this is where Jesus on the cross says, Father, forgive them. Yeah. Like, to forgive means... Because he modeled that. Yeah, he it means that. I forgive. And, and I've kept no and record. He could, right. he could have... He has the longest record in the world. Yeah. He could have kept that. It's, it says, <laughs> yeah. love does not delight in evil, but rejoices yeah. with the truth. It always protects. Mm -hmm. It always trusts. Mm -hmm. Even when that trust has been broken, it always hopes. It always believes it could be better. Mm -hmm. It always yeah. perseveres. Love never fails. And I always say at this point in, in, a, in our wedding ceremony, I, you know, people say, oh, Bill, I can give you an example where love has failed. And I always say, I actually respectfully disagree with you. I don't think love fails. I think people fail to love. Because if love is a choice, and love is wanting the other person to win, you can't fail in that. You can't. And so learning these tools, how to talk to each other, communication, share experiences, Guys, can I just encourage you this? Lead the way in this. We're the worst at this. Um, we, we love being a couch potato, but you got to get up and, and activate that. Share, create experiences. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of the romance. It's not the flowers. It's the fact that you thought of her and you're sharing that experience together. It's not going out to dinner. It's the fact that you're sharing that dinner together. The, the that doesn't mean flowers and dinner aren't nice, though. No, yeah. I know. <laughs> That, that was Forsbergian right there. I'll be getting flowers this week. Um, celebrate diversity. Like, that's be right. okay with being yeah. different. Actually, that's, yeah. that's what makes you better together. Celebrate those differences. Yeah, yeah resolve yeah. conflict. Mm -hmm. And then, at the end of the day, love each other truly. Mm -hmm. um, have a certain time. And this, this applies yeah. to friendship. Mm -hmm. This applies if, you, if you're not married and you're thinking about getting married. Mm -hmm. Become the kind of person that, that reflects this. Mm -hmm. Um, no matter what stage you're at, this, mm -hmm. this is apl applicable to all relationships. Yeah. And, and relationships are not a sprint. Oh, this is good. Relationships are not a sprint. I know. They're not a marathon either. 
Marathons seem to have no end in sight, <laughs> right? If you've ever run one, I've, hear, I've heard from people that have. And uh, I feel like they're more like a relay race. I feel like marriages, or, uh, marriages, relationships of all kinds are part of a relay race. Everybody in a relay race is strong in a different section of that race. Mm. But one will run for a section and they'll get tired, they'll need a break. Then they'll pass that baton on to the next person in that team. And when you're in a relationship, you're, you're in a team, right? You're doing life together. They'll pass that baton on. That person grabs the baton. They run that leg of the journey, and they run until they're just exhausted. And then it gets passed to another person on the team. And I liken that to relationships because when all of us can run our bits, you know, we don't all have to be strong in the exact same areas. And in fact, we're not meant to be. We're not meant to be carbon copies of each other. That's not the point of relationship. The point of relationship is to take those strengths that God's created you with, use them to the fullest, and then share that load, run that race together, but do it together mm -hmm. and realize you're not superior to the other person because you did this part better, right? Yeah, well, you're you, equals in this race. When you shared that analogy with me, I thought of a tough mutter. Like mm, yeah. a race where you actually are all doing it together. And there's mm -hmm. times when someone can't climb over that wall, so you all together get them over the wall. Mm -hmm. And there's times when someone's faster, so you, you celebrate all of that, mm -hmm. but you you've actually finish as a team. Yeah. I, I love that. Yeah. In a relay race, mm -hmm. if one person drops a baton, everybody loses. Mm -hmm. In a tough mm -hmm. mutter, if one person doesn't finish the race, you all lose. And mm -hmm. I think if we had that approach to our relationships, that the only way we're going to win is if we do it together, mm -hmm. man, you'd be able to do a lot more. Absolutely. So anyway, yeah. we, we run out of time, but let's, mm -hmm. let's ask a couple really quick questions. And, um, and so, and so one, uh, one question was, what does a couple do when they find themselves in a married relationship that is going in different spiritual directions? Mm -hmm. um, well, the Bible actually talks about this. Uh, the, the truth is that you need to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And then the Bible says, because uh, there, were, there were a group of women, in, uh, according that Paul wrote to, mm -hmm. whose spouses, their husbands, were not followers. Mm -hmm. And so... He said, you honor and respect them. Stick to your convictions, mm -hmm. live in your convictions, but also honor and respect. Don't disrespect them. Mm -hmm. Treat them with honor. Mm -hmm. And so I think, I think sometimes, I mean, it's, that's, that's a very difficult scenario. And I Absolutely. wouldn't wish that on anyone, but mm -hmm. I think... Um, that's why need, it's good to talk about those things at the beginning of a relationship, but sometimes Absolutely. those things change midstream. Sometimes they change. They do. Yeah. And, and it's that point you make yeah. a decision to, to love them. Mm -hmm. Um, cause, because here's, here's the reality. If, what, what if Jesus had given up on us when we weren't moving in the right spiritual direction? Hmm. Right? So I think the only way that you can do that is if you really fully appreciate what Jesus has done for you. Mm -hmm. That he loved you even when you were in rebellion against him. Yeah. yeah. Another That's question? So uh, you want to read that one? How do you balance expressing frustration about an important issue in a relationship and only building your partner up? So you want to express frustration and the issue is important, but you also want to build your partner up. Good question. It's a very good question. This is where you really want to engage the I statements. Uh, in, in conflict, where the value is really important, the way that you say what your issue is it also has to be communicated in a very thoughtful way. That's right. Um, if so you, explain that. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, if I'm, if I'm feeling very frustrated about an issue that's important, it's not just a garbage, taking the garbage out. That's, to <laughs> me, that doesn't, it's not a big deal, right? But the big, bigger issues, that kind of stuff, like the stuff with more weight attached to it, um, I, I will come and I'll say, you know, when this doesn't happen, you know, X, Y, Z, whatever that issue is, I feel right. like you're ignoring me. Or I feel like you don't really care about my thoughts in this matter. Um, this is how I'm feeling. The moment that you start a conversation with, you always do this, or you never do this, or you really make me angry, well, the, the second you do that, their walls are going to go up, and you have just lost all chances for a meaningful conversation in that moment. Because when walls go up, nothing really penetrates through. So I would just like ask God to lead you with what you need to say so that you're thoughtful in how you say it. And then I'd also be careful of the timing of it. If you're in the middle of a really busy season in your lives, whatever this relationship is, um, if you're in, the, in a very busy time, that's probably not the time to start a conversation. Create some right. space. Create some space to deal with it because if it's a really important issue, you need to treat it like that. 
and say, okay, I, I really want to see something happen as a result of our conversation. I don't want to just, you know, not make a difference here, yeah. right? And I think so. the key is, is why you're having this conversation. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times when we, when we do have a frustration, it's because I want you to change. Yeah. I need you to be different. It's I, all your fault. I'm dumping on mm -hmm. you my frustration. Mm -hmm. And actually, if, it, and, and here's the deal. We as human beings are very intuitive. We can tell why you're having this conversation. If the conversation is because I want us to win, mm -hmm. so this is, this is, I feel hurting us, mm -hmm. you can be very blunt and direct. We're not talking about ignoring real issues, mm -hmm. but just make sure you frame them in the why. Why mm -hmm. is this important for us to win? Mm -hmm. Um, and so for us, a, a big conversation was money. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, we had to get back to the why. Not, <laughs> not how you should spend your money or my mm -hmm. money. When you, oh, my, like, that kind of language is really destructive because yeah. you're separating. But it was like, okay, what are our goals and how mm -hmm. can we accomplish those together? You can be really blunt and direct mm -hmm. in those kind of conversations. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're gonna, we ran out of time. If you have any more questions, you can, you can email, them us, uh, email them to us or if you texted them, we will respond to you this week. Mm -hmm. And again, um, and, and there was one last question that was really good, and, and this, this is what I want to end with, because I think it applies to all of us. Mm -hmm. How do you know, um, how, how do you deal with someone who always feels like they're a victim? And, and, he, and, and, and the problem with our culture is that we've actually made that something to be celebrated. We actually <laughs> look for yeah. diversity, right? We label, you're left, you're to right. Yeah. Right, we, to separate, we're constantly yeah. doing that, and it's mm -hmm. incredibly destructive. Yeah. And so I think when someone feels like they're a victim, partly it's societal, and that's what we, we as a church are coming against that, because mm -hmm. we're against that, mm -hmm. um, whenever you feel like you're, not, you're less than. So I think the key is just to speak constant encouragement, mm -hmm. value, Remember what you're love, for. Remember what you're for. Not what you're against. Yeah. And yeah. so, again, our hope for you in this um, experience today was that you just feel a little bit empowered. It might, might be just one tool. Maybe, maybe you, you have a tool you need to put in the tool belt. Maybe you need to sharpen one. Maybe you feel mm -hmm. like you don't have any of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope that you take this seriously enough and value relationship enough to go, okay, God, show me what I can do with mm -hmm. this. And if we can help you in any way. There's a team down here at the front. As soon as we're done our experience, I would love to pray with you. Mm -hmm. You can take advantage of those connection cards in the seat in front of you. If you're watching mm -hmm. online, just interact with our online pastor. We want you to win. We want you to win. And if we can help you in that, we will do our very best. But you need to pick up the tool, you need to sharpen the tool, and you need to use it because your relationships are worth it. And so God, mm -hmm. I just pray that even in this really practical conversation, I know that you're speaking to us. And I know how it works. Everyone who's listened to this, there's something, maybe it's just one thing, maybe it's multiple things that they know that they need to work on. God, help us, free us from the desire to fix people around us. Free us from the desire to make them what we want them to be or even need them to be. Teach us to forgive and to encourage and build up. But God, teach us what it means to, for us mm -hmm. to find the tools that we need to be all that you've called us to be and that we're in relationship for one reason, to win together for each other. And so I pray, God, that you'd help just break through some of the lies that we believe, some of the struggles, the frustrations to find that place of true love, love that gives without expecting anything in return. That's tough, but that's what you've called us to. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so today we bless you, Carlene and I, um, one, for loving us the way we are. <laughs> We're not perfect, and thank you for loving us the way we are, but we also love you for who you are. You need to know that. And so we release you today with the knowledge that there's a God who loves you and that you should fight for your relationships because he's been fighting for you mm -hmm. since the time you were created. Mm -hmm. And so I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen.